Hi, welcome to Garden Ninja. Today I'm going to be showing you how to repot a container plant into a larger pot. And there's a number of reasons why you may do this. In this instance, the pot's actually been broken, so we're going to transfer it to a bigger one to allow it to grow a bit more freely. You may also be repotting on plants because they've become root bound, and that's another good example of this. Unfortunately, I'm repotting in situ on a porch here, which is next to a busy road, so there's quite a lot of road noise. And I've done my best to try and minimise that, but the purpose of repotting in situ is that if you're dealing with large and heavy plants, what you don't want to be doing is trying to cart them to and from behind a garden into a shed. Sometimes it's better to work with what you've got there and then to save your back and your legs. Hopefully this video will be of some use though. You're going to need a few key things to repot a plant. First things first, you're going to need a trowel to help break up the plant's root structure and also backfill with any growing medium or compost. You're going to need a shovel to put the compost in with, some crocks, which are pieces of broken pottery or stone, which you're going to put in the bottom of the pot to assist with the drainage of the pot. If the hole at the bottom is left there without being filled, it may free drain too quickly. Obviously you're going to need a suitable pot to put the plant into. This is a frost resistant terracotta pot. There's a few other tools that you're going to need. One of them being a kneeling mat. Now they're only a couple of pounds but they really save your knees when you're kneeling down. A good tip I always wanted to told is that the dirtier your mat, the better the gardener because obviously you've been using it for so long. So as you can see mine's pretty filthy. Um, I always use it when I'm out in the garden. You also going to need some gloves to help protect your hands. Um, I used to garden without gloves, but after many years you get calluses, dry skin, it's, it's not very attractive. So always use gloves, it helps as well. Things like thorns and rocks. And then lastly, definitely not least, is your growing medium. So here I've got some multi-purpose peat-free compost. And that's really important because peat takes thousands of years um, to manufacture in the wild. Um, in peat bogs. It's really bad for the environment to go slicing it out to make compost. There are better peat free alternatives that have a, a lower impact on the environment. So I'm using this sterile compost to pot on this bay tree. So the first things first, we need to take the bay tree out of the pot. So I'm just going to make sure that this pot's clean and sterile by rubbing off any dirt and making sure there's no algae or moss growing in there which could affect the growth of the plant. Now that I've done that and cleaned the pots, I'm going to take these two crops here, which are part of old broken pots, and place them inside to assist with drainage. So hopefully you can see this. I'm just going to place them down in the bottom to make sure that they cover that drainage hole. Now you want to make sure that you've got some compost or growing medium in the bottom of this, because obviously this is a much bigger pot than the original, and you want to make sure that when you put your new plant in, that it comes up to just below the lip, that makes sure that water doesn't run off and spill soil everywhere um, and it also means that the plant's at a nice angle. So I'm using the trowel for this, or the compost scoop I should call it. So what I'm going to do here is to gently tease this bay tree out of this damaged pot and be careful not to disrupt the roots too much. Okay, now as you can see, this is what we call root board, where the roots are all compacted and twisted around the original pot. So what I'm going to do is use my hands to break up some of that root and then position it into this new pot. As you can see, they come away quite easily. Okay, time to start back to loop. Okay, so I'm going to be taking the compost out of the bin that I've got here and pushing it around the sides of the plant. I'll be adjusting the bay tree to make sure that it's even and um, just remember not to go too far up the stem. This is quite a woody stem. If you were to build the compost up too high, it can cause it to rot, it can cause infection and that's not what you want. So you need to be a bit cautious, but just make sure that it's nicely firmed in, which is what I'll do now.
I'm going to be using some white pebbles here as a decorative mulch around the bay tree. And just a word of caution, always make sure you know where you're buying your pebbles from. Um, it's quite unethical to go and take them off the beach or to get them from places that may have got them through indiscriminate means. So again, it's just another environmental point. What the pebbles will do is they will act as a mulch around the plant which means that they will help keep water in and keep the soil from being eroded, washed or blown away from the plant. They also look really nice so it's nice to think about what kind of decorative mulch you want whether it be pebbles, slate, chipped bark or organic matter. Um, there's benefits and drawbacks to them all but I think given this is on a porch that pebbles will do a really good job. So last but not least, we're going to give this a water, with some water from the rain butt. Again, another environmental consideration, and then we're good to go. There we have it, a guide to potting on a plant into a new container. If you have any more comments or queries, please visit www.gardeninja.co.uk. Thanks for watching.